Hello and welcome to lesson four of software design and development for National 5 Computing Science. Today we're going to look at selection, also known as if statements. If we go back to the course specification, we've done the first three bullet points. The fourth bullet point is selection constructs using simple conditional statements with these logical operators. And you'll notice that later we've got selection constructs using complex conditional statements. We will stick with the simple ones for lesson four. So let's go back to Replit and I'm going to leave this program as it is. I quite like this program and what a good idea for you as a student in Scotland sitting in your National 5 Computing Science course. It's a very good idea to save different programs that do specific things. For example, this one takes inputs, it does a simple process and it does an output, a simple input process output. has a little bit of arithmetic, that's fine. Assigning values to variables as well. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to home of Replit and I'm going to create a new Replit in Python and I'm going to call this one Selection. I'll create my Replit and here it is. So it's a new one, it's a fresh one. So I can refer back to this whenever I need to figure out how I do selection. I'm going to close my files panel, I don't need to see that. So I've got more room for my code. Now let's talk about selection. What is selection? Selection is a way for a program to make a choice. It can choose to take action depending on certain conditions. For example, we might have a program that will only allow people of a certain age to continue. Maybe it's uh, like Netflix or the BBC iPlayer where you have to be a certain age to watch certain programs or movies. Now what we could do is we could check if the age entered by the user is greater than a certain value or if it's less than a certain value, we could stop the program and say, sorry, you're not allowed to continue. And there are a bunch of other operators and we'll take a look at those today. So let's go to the program and let's just create a simple example that we mentioned earlier. Uh, let's pretend we're creating a Netflix ripoff and we're only going to allow the user to watch a film if the age they enter is greater than a certain value. So I'm going to ask the user to enter their age. Their age is going to be a whole number, so it's an integer. And in these brackets, we're going to ask for an input by saying enter your age. We've got the double brackets on the end because we've got an open bracket for the integer section and an open bracket for the input section. This is a common mistake that people sometimes make when they only have a single bracket when you press enter and you try and run it. We're going to get an error message. Unexpected end of file while parsing. So this error message doesn't really make sense for a beginner, but I know that it's that missing bracket. Always be aware of the number of brackets. You must have matching open and close brackets. Okay, so we've got the user's age, and if the user is old enough to watch a certain film, we're going to say, enjoy the movie. So, how we do that in Python is we type the word if age, and then we use the logical operator from this list. Now, some of these, it's not possible to type them out on a standard keyboard without doing some fancy business. So, in Python, we don't do any of these fancy icons, these special characters, we just do a combination that will work for us. Now to check if something is greater than, that's easy, you just use the greater than symbol. You can type the greater than symbol by doing shift and full stop. The less than symbol is shift and comma, right next to the greater than symbol. If you want to do equal to, it's a double equal. This is for checking if something is equal. If you want to set something equal, like we're setting the age equal to what the user enters, that's a single equals. If you want to check if it's equal, it's a double equals. So if I want to check if your age is exactly 15, for example, that's how I would do it. If you want to check if an age is not equal, like if your age is not equal to 15, I would do a exclamation mark equals. This is if age is not equal to 15. If I want to check if it's greater than or equal, it's a greater than symbol than the equals. And likewise, the less than symbol does less than or equal. Notice that the equals comes after the greater than or less than symbol. Okay, so we've, we've kind of learned the logical operators. What are we going to check for? Well, the Mortal Kombat film's coming out next year, and you have to be 18 to see that. So we could say if the age is less than 18, and then the colon completes this line of code. This tells Python that this is the end of the if statement. The colon indicates that what comes after will only be executed if the age is in fact less than 18. Now, when I press enter, you'll notice it indents. You see this little cursor, the flashing line? That's the cursor, it's indented. Anything that is indented after an if statement will only execute, it will only be carried out if the if statement is true. So if the age is less than 18. So what do I want to say if the age is less than 18? I want to print a message saying you are too young to see Mortal 
combat with a K because it's cool. Now, if I run this and I type an age less than 18, it tells me you are too young to see Mortal Kombat. But let's say we are not too young. Let's say we are 19. It does nothing. Why is that? Because this line only executes if the age is less than 18. And that is the only display that we have. This is the only print statement. But what if I want to write some code after this line? Well, when we press enter, you'll notice it stays indented and anything that is still indented will only happen if the age is less than 18 in this example. So it was still indented, so it printed it. But if I am old enough, it doesn't print it. So these all belong to this one if statement, all these indented lines of code. So if I want something to happen after this if statement, and to happen no matter what, I need to unindent. So I use the backspace key or the delete key. And this line of code will print no matter what. So it will print if I'm less than 18, as well as the other lines of code that will print if I'm less than 18. It will print no matter what. And it will also print if I am over 18. It will print no matter what, because it doesn't belong to the if statement. Now it's important to note that the indented blocks must be continuous. You know, you know that you can't have an unindented block and then indent a block after it. This will give you an error. This is an unexpected indentation error. So if I run this, see indentation error, unexpected indent. This line of code only runs if the age is less than 18. This is belonging to this if statement. This will run no matter what, but then we have an indented line for no reason. This does not belong to the if statement because we exited the if statement by unindenting here. Hopefully that makes sense to you. A lot of this, again, will make much more sense once you practice, practice, practice. Right, so this is okay, but didn't we say we were going to check if someone is over 18, not if they're less than 18? Okay, what we want to do then is we want to check if they're over 18. But as you know, if I say over 18 and I want to print the message, enjoy the movie, this is only going to happen if they're over 18, obviously. But what if you're exactly 18? Are you old enough to see an 18 movie? Of course you are, because it's 18 or over, not over 18. So there's two ways we could solve this, because this is a whole number. I could just say greater than 17, and this will work. So now an 18-year-old can see the 18-year movie. Enjoy the movie. But this doesn't seem intuitive to me. It doesn't seem intuitive to say if you're over 17, you can watch the movie, because you have to be 18 or over. That's how it works. Because if you're 17 and a half, you're technically over 17. So I suppose it's a conflict between the English language and maths. So what we can do instead, to make it more intuitive, say that instead of over 18, we say greater than or equal to 18. This is like 18 or over. So this is much better. So now if I'm 18, it works. And even if, for some reason, I've created it as a float, and I type my age as... 18.0001, it still lets me in. Whereas if I am 17.99999, it does not let me in, even though it's like a couple of minutes before my 18th birthday. <laughs> so I'm going to get rid of this line of code here. I don't want this to print no matter what. What I want to do instead is if the age is over 18, 18 or over, I'm going to say enjoy the movie, but I do want to print something if I'm not over 18. So I could say, if the age is less than 18, then print a message saying, you are too young for mortal combat. What a shame. Now this will work. For example, if I'm 15, you are too young for mortal combat. But if I'm 19, it'll say, enjoy the movie. So it's only ever going to print one of these because you can't be greater than or 18 and less than 18. But this code is quite inefficient. It's not a hugely inefficient program, it's only doing two things, one or the other, but it's not good practice to perform these two checks because we're checking something twice even though the first check tells us if the second one is true. For example, if you are not greater than or equal to 18, well by simple deduction you know you must be less than 18. So we don't need to check this a second time. This is a waste of the processor's time. And it's a waste of coding time as well. It's not a huge amount of coding time to type this again. But we can run into mistakes if we start accidentally putting in an equals here. So if I type this, if I accidentally put in an equals and I'm 18, it's actually going to tell me, enjoy the movie, you are too young for Mortal Kombat. So this is a mistake simply because 
I added extra code that I didn't necessarily need. But then you're probably thinking, well, how do we get around this problem? Well, instead of checking it again, I could just say, if the age is greater than or equal to 18, print enjoy the movie. Otherwise, so if it's not greater than or equal to 18, print this line of code. So how do we type that? A special keyword in Python is else. And most programming languages have an if else construct. So if the age is greater than or equal to 18, I'm going to print enjoy the movie. Otherwise, it will print you're too young for Mortal Kombat. Quite intuitive, quite uh, quite easy to understand, I think. So if I am exactly 18, I will enjoy the movie. Otherwise, if I'm not greater than or equal to 18, like 17, I'm too young for it. So it's only going to print one or the other. So that's one example. Let's do another example where we're not using greater than or equal to or greater than and less than. Let's use the equals and the not equals. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new REPL because I don't want to overwrite this. I don't want to lose this code that I've written. I want to refer to this again in the future. So I'm going to create a new one in Python and this is going to be selection two. So it's just another selection example that I can refer to in the future. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask the user to guess a number. So the number is going to be a whole number. I'm just going to ask them to guess a number between one and 10. Now I'm not going to make sure that they have actually typed in one between one and 10, but we'll get to that later. That is something you will need to learn, but not yet. And all I'm going to say is if the number that they have guessed equals the number that I have in my head. So for right now, I'm just going to choose seven. Then I'm going to print the message. Well done. You guessed my number. So this is how we check if the number is equal to seven. So if the number equals seven, they've guessed my number. So if we guess the number seven, well done, you guessed my number. What if we want to say hard lines, you got it wrong? Well, we could say not equal if the number is not equal to seven. So if the user doesn't equal seven, I say unlucky, that's not the number I was thinking. I can run the code, guess the number between one and 10 and I type six. Unlucky, that's not the number I was thinking. But obviously, if it's not not equal to seven, that means they guessed seven. So I could add to this program and say else print, well done, you guessed it. So now when I run the program, if the number does not equal seven, it will print unlucky, that's not the number I was thinking. Otherwise, it will print, well done, you guessed it. Let's try that. Well done. There we go. So two examples. We've got the if the number is not equal to something, then we print unlucky. Otherwise, well done. And the previous example in selection was if the age was greater than or equal to 18, they can enjoy the movie. Otherwise, they're too young for Mortal Kombat. So that's your first introduction to selection. We're going to do more on this because we can do complex selections and there is a bit more we can do with selection as well. But we'll get to that in the next lesson. I'll see you then.